Wow, the barbarian spawns are actually atrocious. I was getting ready to start when I noticed there were barbarians hanging around the place that had spawned at, a, that had spawned at the end of last time. And so I started killing them off. And once again, there was one remaining, who is, this time, even worse, at Y9. Yeah. And I don't know if I can adjust these... I don't know if I have any control over the raids other than just turning them off. And that might just have to happen. Like I talked about it before, they're minorly useful. I get free, uh... Or borderline free enchanting books from these things, because I kill them and they'll occasionally drop the things, and I just get good stuff. So I, I got very, very nervous, like, don't toss the wrong thing, don't toss the wrong thing. But, um, anyways, let's head back up. Hello, everybody! My name's Ardendris, and welcome back to Ruby M World of Blocks. Last time, we took some more shots at the raid system, and we got a new personal best that was uh, put to a swift end by a giant bird. We can actually head back over there and show it off if we want to, but we are either going to have to beat that thing before starting a new raid, or we're going to have to find a new raid spot, because uh, that thing is definitely in the way. But uh, I came back, I just started processing up some of the dust we got as a reward. The, the rewards weren't that great. We got a decent amount of cash from it, but nothing, But that was it. A decent amount of cash and a decent amount of dust, which is all getting turned into extra cash. Probably a few... I don't know, probably... Maybe a total of six, five hundreds? is my current guess. How accurate that is, I'm not entirely sure. We'll see. But that was only one stack of dust, and we definitely got, like, the equivalent of five stacks. So, yeah, we... Pr and I already spent two 500s that we more or less got specifically from the raid on that. So probably about a total of eight 500s. That's pretty good. It could be a whole lot better, though. But, uh... I'm just going to keep turning these into f hundreds because I'm going to need to get another repair kit because I have one, but Gandu just about to break and I need to use it on it anyway. So I would like to pick up another one before that happens. But, um, yeah, last time made me realize that we are not ready for the raids. Some of the very strong things, specifically the very strong flying things, are incredibly difficult to actually fight if you're not prepared for them with loads and loads of long-range weaponry. We actually managed to put up somewhat of a fight because we can fly using this skill, but the uh, giant bird can also melee hit us, so it knocked me out of aura and sent me hurling towards the ground. And I could have survived with a well-timed slash blade to strike, like that, the little hover that you get when you slash at the right time, but I panicked, and I went like that at the last second, and ended up taking a full, like, 300 block height f damage. So, uh, it's possible we could have managed it, but the amount of time it would have taken on top of everything else would have been insane. So we're gonna have to come up with a new way of fighting the bird if we want to, uh, actually can beat that. Or at least we're going to have to f come up with a better way of staying up in the air in order to properly face it down. So, I think I'm going to jump back into Thom for today, because I think... It's just taking a quick look. I have no idea how some of this stuff works. Oromancy, sadly, I still need to get Flux, I'm not entirely sure how to do that. And, yeah, I need to get Flux before I can get you. Arcane Mind, does that just start a mine? I think it does. Heal. Yeah, as it stands, I need stronger foci to make stronger spells. I need to unlock more things, and I'm not sure how to do most of this stuff. So I'm going to have to wait on Oromancy. But if we start going towards Arcane Infusion, we can get stuff like the Boots of the Traveler, some extra armor stuff, some tools. And I think some of these, like, Curio things... Cloud Stepper Ring, hold on. 
I should get my feet wet by creating a simple bobble. After some thought, I decided to create a ring that will reduce falling damage and possibly help my mobility. It should be fairly simple to draw plans for something like this. Hold on. I can just do that immediately. I have made plans for a bobble. I'm calling the... Uh, I am calling the Cloud Stepper Ring. It makes the wearer lighter, therefore greatly reducing falling damage. Additionally, it can create a momentary puff of air below the wearer when they jump, allowing them to perform a second jump in mid-air. Okay, so that's used with Arcane Infusion. Negligible instability. 50 air, a feather, a mundane ring. I actually got one of those randomly from a chest and an air viz crystal to make this thing. That's kind of exactly what I had in mind. Or at least somewhat in the same vein as something that's going to help me uh, run, uh, stay in the air a little bit more. Hold on a second. I need to go take a quick look at OPS because I think that uh, you're not actually gaining game audio. One second. Sorry about that. You should be able to hear the game now. <laughs> so, uh, that's... Uh, OBS was picking up uh, Minecraft 118.2 instead of 112.2 due to something that I worked on. Well, you'll probably see it in the next day or two. I'm still working on it, so I'm not giving too many spoilers, but it is in 118. I can give you that much. We'll see that soon. But, um, anyways, Cloud Stepper Ring. I need to do our infusion for this, and I need to get a whole bunch of air. How does infusion work? Like, we have the runic matrix. We built that thing to unlock this thing. But I didn't actually go into this, and uh, that actually seems like it might be perfect for what I had in mind. So, let's start with infusion, then. To even get started with infusion crafting, there are several things I will need. The runic matrix, which I now have. That's the thing we already have. Arcane pedestals and a ready supply of magic in the form of Essentia. Once you have your runic matrix properly placed over a structure, commonly known as an infusion altar, you can begin to craft. The altar is crafted with the use of Salus Mundus, like most other mystical structures. Once the pillars have formed, the runic matrix can be activated using a casting tool. What is this thing? Okay, so... Eight arcane stone, an arcane pedestal, and a runic matrix. Okay. So, pedestal is arcane stone, simple enough. So, what's the Salus Mundus used for? Once you have your runic matrix properly placed into a structure, commonly known as. Um. Okay, so we build this structure using a bunch of arcane stone surrounding a uh, arcane pedestal, which is more arcane stone. Seems simple enough. I have some slabs laying around. Arcane stone is stone surrounding a crystal, right? That looks like it should just work. Um, what do I have the most of? Terra. It's always Terra. I th think I should already have some amount of stone still laying around. Not really. I have a little bit of andesite, uh, a little bit of stone brick rather, but not much else. Hold on, I can fix that. I have this stone brick, I just need to go grab a chisel. I actually figured this out while I was uh, finishing up the wall, or not finishing up the wall, while I was working on the wall, but before last episode. I can just head down here, and I suppose I knew this in theory, but not in practice. I can just hit that three times, and I then get a stone brick. Two, three. One, two, three. And thus, uh, my breaking spell on there is not going to really do a thing. But I can just n not end up having to smelt up stone. I can just do this for free. Oops. And then this... Actually, it doesn't really matter. As long as it is not stone proper... It can get put into the chisel and then become stone in here. So, maybe a little cheaty, but uh, it's it's just saving some time as far as like smelting stuff goes. So, I need to cover up a little bit of this stuff. Just gonna have some of it on standby. So, and so, and so, I think... 
That should be good enough for now. That's 16 stone. So we bring this back up. We go back to our like little crafting station. And we should be able to make the runic altar. And here, you and you gets arcane stone. Why does it make nine of it? Interesting. Oh, that's supposed to be made that way? Um, where was arcane stone previously found? Uh, I don't remember. Like, which of these things actually had the rest of you? Oh, I know, that's how it's supposed to be. Like, I'm just, guess I'm misremembering how that works. But anyways, we need eight of these for the structure itself, which means we're going to need to do that one more time. And these ones end up being used for the pedestal, which actually needs one more of you. So, so, and so gets us the pedestal. And thus, we should be able to make this. I just need to pick up you. And I, sh I should go set up like a proper place for Thom instead of just doing this out in the open like this. Because uh, I'm, I'm assuming Thom has always been a little bit uh, dangerous as far as things like this go. So I uh, set this up out here. Kind of still in the middle. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And then I think it said that the matrix goes in the middle here. I can just use a thing like so. Runic matrix. And now I can actually use the CAD to pick it up. There it is. So. Now, how do I activate you? I'm assuming this is where uh, Salus Mundus comes in. How do I make Salus Mundus again? That's... Three crystals, a bowl, flint, and redstone. So, how are you doing? I need to keep a somewhat close eye on that. So, grab out a Perdicio, because I have a bunch of those, and an air, because, again, I have a bunch of those. Flint. Jump some random inventory stuff away, because, once again, I am completely full. But, uh, nothing ex is exactly new in that regards, is it? So, you, 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 you and you, get us a Salus Mundus, you two can just, like, stick in there for now. Salus Mundus, and this thing is now activated. Cool. How do I make you work? <laughs> So, oops, my mic there. Infusion. Once you have your runic matrix properly placed into a structure, notice that, crafted with the Salus Mundus, once the pillars have formed, the runic matrix can be activated using a casting tool. Like the caster's gauntlet? No, that puts the thing in there. That's not what I want, I don't think. Um, central pedestal located under the matrix is where the item you wish to infuse will go. You also need several more pedestals placed around the altar where you can place the blocks and items you wish to infuse into the target object. Okay, so we're going to need to place more pedestals here, uh, unlike those corner bits then. So, infusion boosting. Cloud Stepper has... Okay, okay, we can look at further stuff ahead. Okay, so let's actually head back to Oromancy real quick. Because the advanced foci needs four things there. Quicksilver, Ender Pearl, Diamond, whatever. So it looks like extra pedestals go here, here, and in all four corners. That's simple enough. I just need to go gather a little bit more stone. And uh, yeah, I'll turn it into the pedestals or whatnot. Let me just do the same trick I did a moment ago. And just get the stone together, shall we? And here we go. Extra arcane stone. Like so. Gets us six. I'm going to need two pedestals specifically for this. So that goes like so, so, and so. Technically speaking, we could make one more right now. But that the sh two should do for this time being. So this goes here and here, right? According to the thing for you. So we take a mundane ring, an air crystal, and a feather. 
But I'm uh, assuming I'm still missing an important step here that we're going to run into in just a moment. We'll set it up for this, though. Like, as it stands, we have all the materials. We're just probably missing an important step. Heather, I don't think it really matters. Can't actually do the ritual just yet because I haven't read all the way up, but it is set up properly to do. So, what is the last part of infusion rituals? Give, give one second. Sorry, suddenly got very paranoid that in trying to fix game audio, I might have accidentally made it so I wasn't getting picked up. But uh, it's been fine. I've been being picked up the whole time, I'm fairly certain. Anyways, we're skipping ahead. Infusion. The central is placed under the matrix where the item you wish to infuse will go. You also need several more pedestals placed around the altar where you can place the blocks and items you wish to infuse into the target object. Lastly, you will need warded jars or similar essentia containers holding the requisite amount of Vs. Once all of all this is gathered, you can click on the runic matrix with a casting tool to start the cast crafting process. During the first stage of it, crafting, essential will be drained from nearby sources. Crafting will stall if there is insufficient essential available, something that you do not want and will be explained on following pages. Once all the required essentia has been infused into the target object, the other objects will have their essential es essence drained. Only when this is done will the crafting process complete. It is not without risks. The entire process involves forcing vast energies into a single object. Unpredictable things tend to happen. Okay, so that's what the instability thing is. So this is a very low instability object we're making. But at higher level things will get more dangerous. Usually one of the fusion objects gets knocked off a pedestal or flux gets generated, but more catastrophic events are not unheard of. The longer crafting continues due to unresolved problems like lack of Vs or dropped items, the greater the chance of something bad happening. These effects can be reduced by various means. Firstly, you wish to keep the entire fusion structure as symmetrical as possible. Taking careful note of where you place pedestals and make sure they are balanced with other pedestals on the opposite side of the altar. When placing fusion items into them, you may wish to keep them balanced as well. Lastly, you can place occult paraphernalia around the altar in symmetrical form formations, things like candles, skulls. These will have the effect of reducing instability. Okay, so we use a crafting tool once we have a sufficient amount of air Vs supplied nearby that thing. I currently do not have a thing for the air. We have uh, Vitrium, Instrumentum, the Control, One Terra, and Perdicio. I'm going to need an extra warded jar, and I'm just going to have to keep smelting some... Uh, I think I'm going to need to get more, get more glass, because I don't have extra jars available. Uh, I do have some extra glass in here, though. That's actually enough. I just need to grab a couple of slabs... Let's grab the oak perch ones, because why not? And thus, I can just dump, like, a whole bunch of things with air in it. And thus, we'll be able to get everything going. I mean, easy option is just, like, 50 air crystals, but that will be a large majority of what I have available. I do have two files of air essentia already, which means I only need to do 30. I already had a whole bunch of those things already in here. I didn't have to go running around looking for it. But, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I misclicked once. And so I can just put all 30 of these in here. And once this is all done, there should be 30 air essentia in this thing. Currently, there's eight, 15, 20. 23. It's just going to take a little bit to go through, but I can then put those in there as well. 43. 44. Is there still stuff to go in? Apparently there is some amount of loss of, uh, there is some degree of loss, because I definitely put 30 in there and only got 24. So it should be an extra six needed to go in. 48. 49. 49. Once again, there's some lost. Just do that. 50. There we go. I saw like the flux coming off of that. If I start scanning this, will I start... 
no visible flux yet, so I haven't learned about that yet. But we now have the 50 air Vs, which can then be placed nearby. And then I right click on you with the casting tool. Okay, that looks like it's doing a thing. And so this should just go at it. It will start draining away at the air Vs. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Thumbnail. <laughs> and there we have a cloud stepper ring that goes in a ring slot. Oh, and now I have an extra jump that also takes my uh, double jump. So... And, like, just like any other jump, I'm fairly certain. Jump. Yep, I can then use that to avoid taking fall damage if I time it well. That is already, like, a major step towards what I wanted if I want to face down the, uh, Nevermore. The adult Nevermore, whatever it's called. I need to get more armor. I need to go take a look at you and see if you can't give me a set that's at least equivalent, if not the same or equivalent to what I currently have. Because uh, I'm going to need it. Because this stuff is not going to last through another fight. So uh, I'm going to dump inventory stuff real quick. And then I think we're going to take a bit more of a look at infusion stuff. See if there's anything else that might come in handy. Because this is already a pretty major boost. So I'll see you in just another second. I just made a bit of a blunder when it comes to selling off dust. I just went to turn a full stack of 10s into, uh, into 50s, and I accidentally turned it into a full stack of fire dust, because it's the same thing, and thus a full entire stack of 10s got cut in half price value-wise, because each one is only 5, I got half my money back due to that mistake. So that's a little sad, definitely lost a couple hundreds there. But um, anyways, I got rid of most of the stuff. I forgot the die right there. Let's see what else we could get with Infusion. We need the re Recharge Pedestal if we want to get Boots of the Traveler. Those are very good for extra speed boost and whatnot, so it might be worth it to look at that. But we have the Headband of Curiosity. The experience orbs I gather from harvested resources and slain monsters contain both magical energy and packets of knowledge. I am certain that more can be done with them than simple enchanting. Okay, that sounds like it could be cool. Inverted charms. I occasionally find myself being affected with poisons and other nasty afflictions. I should find a way to protect myself. Hold on. Verdant charms. Theory arcane infusion too. Time to get to work. The infusion thing is not close enough. But that's okay. I can just bring this thing with me. I still have the chisel on me. I forgot to get rid of you too. But get a little, little bit away so I can just do this. This thing is coming with me. Chisel can go away. And if I put you here, paper and scribing tools get put in here as well. That thing doesn't count for infusion, I guess. Craft theory. Fine, I'll just do it over here anyways. So, Oromancy infusion. We're after infusion specifically. Just pretty much going to ignore everything else. Reject Arcane Infusion. No. Um, by making assumptions on the results of infusing certain objects with Essentia, and then testing those results, valuable insult may be gained. You will learn much by combining Machina Essentia with White Wool, and then studying the result. Gain 16 Infusion. I need 10 Machina. Um, I don't know how to get that. I feel like I've seen it before. Like, aspects. It will pop up in the book if I've seen it. Okay, it's on something that I have lying around. I just don't have it available to me at the moment in just easy file. Machina, is it hanging around in here? Like, any crystals for it? Doesn't look like it. My best guess would be, like, a piston might have some... That seems like a pretty good guess, like it's a machine. 
I don't think it's in dispensers, despite those being also a machine, but I can double check that. Oh, I guess dispensers do have five, but I need to pick up ten of it, and I... And I will... Do I lose them? I don't think so. I don't remember. But trying to actually get that out of there with everything else in there is going to take way more files than I actually have. That, that just seems like a lot of work. Let's just go for the uh, ponder. You carefully consider all you've gained. Gain 25 progress divided evenly between all current active categories and a bonus draw. I think that's just going to be 25 on infusion because it's the only one. Oh yeah, that was just better anyways. Experimental infusion. Gain 13 infusion with Mythis, which again, I don't have laying around. Or once again, I think Ponder is just going to be better. Yeah, Ponder, 25 between these two. Let's see. Uh, Machina, Crystal, and an Aversio will gain me Alchemy. Or a Mancy. Okay, I need... Take some of the slush null notes you have made and compare them for possible correlations with your primary research categories. You gain 25 to 50 inspiration towards infusion. Um, stellar eastern quadrant. I know I have that. Lunar new. I have a few star charts, but not really a whole lot. Do I have one for the lunar new? Aha, I actually have two. And then it's eastern quadrant, right? I think is what it said. I don't mind giving you up. There's a large chunk for that. Ooh, we have Eldritch Knowledge now. Interesting. There's a full level of Arcane. I think I need two, though. Reject Fundamentals. Gain Infusion with Tenebrae and Glowstone. Let's just Ponder again. That's fine. 15 Alchemy. Loromancy. Let's just give up... Let's just grab an Herba thing. I think I already have those laying around and just get, pick up that one just to finish this off. This isn't even going to cost the thing. It just needs me to have it on me. 15 alchemy and a bonus draw. That's fine. Complete theory. Then we now have a theory point for arcane infusion. Anything pop up now that we have a little bit of eldritch knowledge? I am honestly very interested in that and kind of want to just get a whole bunch of eldritch knowledge because that sounds awesome. But anyways, we do need two levels, so I'm just going to do that again, and hopefully I can't very quickly pick up another Theory of Arcane. So I think I'll just see you in a moment. Okay, so I didn't quite get a whole bunch of Infusion, but I did just get something called Warp because of how much uh, Eldritch I just picked up on that. Um, what's, what's up with the Warp thing? Ooh, Warp. Many believe man was not meant to meddle with magic, and nothing gives more credence to this than the existence of warp. Researching forbidden magics or crafting objects of a questionable nature tends to uh, distort a thaumaturge's view of reality, twisting both their mind and their body. This effect is called warp. While some warp gained is temporary and will fade over time, there is no known way to get rid of permanent warp once it is gained, and a thaumaturge who chooses to ignore the dangers in the pursuit of power often finds himself on a slippery slope. Warp usually manifests as minor lapses in concentration, physical pain, or hallucinations. These are more than merely mental, though, as the visions sometimes impart useful knowledge or seeming hallucinations that prove to be frighteningly real. I should monitor my mental well-being carefully, and to that end I've designed a device that should show me exactly how even my keel is at the moment. The sanity checker, I'd seen this thing before, but I had no idea what it's actually about. Mirrored glass, zombie brains, and alchemical brass nuggets with Ordo and Perdicio. How do you make the mirrored glass? Um, mirror. You are crafted with a Quicksilver and a glass pane. Quicksilver. Cinnabar ore gives you Quicksilver. I don't think I noticed. I don't think I knew that. <laughs> Like, I thought you only got Quicksilver from uh, the Silverwood trees, but because they give you Quicksilver drops. I... What are you using? Essentia tubes and Quicksilver. Okay, no real uses. I don't think I realized that this made Quicksilver. I assume this gave you Cinnabar, which I, is also a real thing, I think, that is not the same. 
But uh, there's six of you. Let's make the sanity checker just to see what it's about. They need glass panes, which I have over here. You and you. I think it's just like so. Does that not give me mirrored glass? Hold on. You and you. Uh. Oops, don't spawn it in. Uh. Oh, wait. Oh. That's one of those things where I have to find where mirrored glass is in one of the other ones before I can actually make that recipe. Okay, so can't actually make that just yet because I haven't studied it in the in the Thaumonomicon. But um, anyways, I do still need like a half a level of arcane infusion. I got a decent chunk of it on that level on that one, but not enough for a full thing. I'm still right there. So, I uh, guess it's back to the drawing board, somewhat literally, on the research table. One more shot at this. And there we go. Yeah, you had to scrap and restart a few times because I kept getting just bad research options, but complete theory. And thus, we have another full theory on uh, Arcane Infusion. I forgot I did that for a second there. I was like, why did it say I spawned something in? What did I spawn in? I... I remember that now. Anyway, it's infusion boosting. That would also take two. Our headband of curiosity, which I also want, would require two. But the charm. The charm, I think, is going to be the most useful for us. I have created designs for a mystical charm that pulses with healing energy that will wash all poisons or similar afflictions from my body. Unfortunately, it cannot heal actual wounds. The ring has an internal store of Vs that needs to be charged with a recharge pedestal or a similar item. It cannot draw Vs from the aura directly. There are also two specialized enchantments I can apply to the charm to improve its function. Life Giver, this infusion enchantment allows the Verdant Heart Charm to regenerate the health of whomever wears it. Okay, that sounds nice. Or Sustainer, this infusion enchantment allows the Verdant Heart Charm to slowly feed and sustain whoever wears it. This includes providing breathable air. Okay, that is also cool. But we can get it... Verdant Life Charm. A Fancy Amulet, which is... Not too expensive, but kind of expensive. In moderately unstable. A whole bunch of Victus, Ordo, and Herba. Milk, Herba, Victus, and a Rare Earth. How do you enchant it? Oh, you just take the thing and you give it extra stuff surrounding it. So Life Giver would be the like stronger of the two, I think. Victus, which is a whole bunch of life and a whole bunch of man. I don't quite remember how to get a whole bunch of man, though. So that basic thing. Rare Earths, we have a couple laying around. Victus, where are we going to get 60 Victus just to like toss into this thing? Um, We're also going to need a whole bunch of Herba. Herba is actually pretty simple. Like... I have, like, whole bunches of extra wheat. That's... Okay, er, okay, I found what I need. <laughs> like, wheat! That I know wheat has herb. How is it, How am I going to get life? Wheat also has, like, only... Wheat is totally life and herb. The two exact things I'm after right now. So I think that's going to be perfect. Extra, uh, extra glass jar... So, just smelt up. I need 50 of each, right? Uh, 60, so that's 6 wheat. Uh, 12 wheat, okay. 1, 2, 3, 4. So if I just put you in there. And then once that's all gone through, I can just pick up 2 of you. Now, where do I get the Ordo? Because I also need a decent chunk of that. Dirty Ordo... One air. There was still air laying around in there, which is now stuck in this jar, because I don't know how to empty the jars. I can't just... I have no idea how to get this one air out of here. It's so sort of just stuck now. But uh, that's like that. 
36 herb. That's not how much was supposed to be in there. 45, 47. Put you down here. I need to figure out what to do with these jars. Maybe I should look more into that in, in a bit. But uh, one more jar, like so. I could technically make another one if need be. Keep pulling out the herbs. Stuck at 47. 35 Victus. Is that all that's in here? That shouldn't be, but it is. There's definitely a loss somewhere, so I'm not entirely sure why. So I guess smelt up. It should only be one more wheat, but let's see. 51. 51. 52. 49. Just smelt up 13 extra ones. If I have extra of these two, that's going to be fine. So I'm just going to wait for that to go, and then I'm going to start looking around. Hopefully I can find something with a whole bunch of Ordo in it. Because uh, just smelting like a million crystals isn't going to be super efficient. So uh, let me let me get to searching and let me just like fill these things up real quick. Okay, so I found I have that all pulled out and I went looking around for things with Ordo. I found chiseled stone bricks. Those are just Terra and Ordo itself. Thankfully, I have a very handy tools to just get a whole bunch of the stuff, which just makes let me make a whole bunch of these. I already have a thing for Terra, so you don't even have to worry about that too much. So, just smelt up like a whole stack of this stuff. I can use that to pull out all the Terra, and I can just use these. I need extra slabs, which I should have somewhere. Here they are. So, you. And you make me another warded jar. And time to just start pulling out all of the Terra I possibly can out of this thing, so that I can hopefully get at the Ordo underneath. So I'm just going to let this go through. Hopefully this should work out just fine, and I won't accidentally fill this one up with Terra as well. Because I already have two things of Terra that has already happened before. Hopefully there's no repeats. So uh, this thing is still filling up with Terra, I'm just going to hopefully wait for all the terror to make its way out and eventually pull the Ordo out instead. It's just going to take me a little bit. Maybe I should make another Alembic. How do I make you? I don't, again, I don't remember. Um, Alembic was Essentia Filters Brass. That's just going to, that would take me a little bit to make. Maybe I should do that though. But uh, eventually all the terror should make its way out and I should be able to get out the Ordo. So, uh, I'll see you in another moment. Okay, so it didn't take too long. We have all the Ordo we need jarred up. And then I also went ahead and just put a couple of things of wheat into the Crucible and used some Quartz Slivers to get Victus and Herba Crystals enough. So all we are missing at this point is a Rare Earth, which we have in here. So... I only have two of these. Like they're rather rare, so uh, you're gonna have to use this one somewhat sparingly. Right, I say that. We need to know that we're probably not gonna get more of these too regularly, so be careful with that. Fancy amulets, diamond, gold, and string. Simple enough. I already have all that stuff just lying around. Inventory management really is not my forte, three of you. So thus we have this as well. Did I get that backwards? No, I got it right. So all we need is a bucket of milk. Thankfully I already have a bucket and cows shouldn't be too hard to find. And then I need to make two more pedestals. It's just going to be a little bit more running around. There should be cows somewhere nearby, although I did kill off a whole bunch of them previously. Get away from me. Get away from me, sirens. I will not hear your call. But, um, anyways. Ugh. Uh, I'm just gonna go find a cow and get some milk real quick. I'll be back in a minute. Ow. There we have the last two arcane pedestals, and I already found the milk and whatnot. 
So you go there, you go there. Fancy amulet goes in the middle. Not the warded jar, the fancy amulets. This has a moderate instability, which is somewhat scary. Rare earth is opposite the milk. So like so, and so. Then, let's see. Victus is to the right of the milk. So you go here. And the herba goes on the other side. So, make sure that we have our Victus, our herba, and our Ordo on the ground nearby. And then right-click on you with the caster's gauntlet to start up the ritual. I should grab you to avoid losing you, because that would be scary. I forgot I had stuff in you still. Oh, no. Put the Victus Crystal back in. That's what it means by instability. We're going to start losing some of those things if we're not careful. Okay, that got sucked into it. Was that... That was it meant to happen, right? That's... Is it still going to work? Or did it just delete the milk bucket and this is going to explode because it's not there now? No, that looks like... Uh oh. No, no, no. Ow. Ow. I'm being struck by weird magical lightning powers. You have gained temporary warp. Oh no. That's might be a bad thing. Ow. It's a good thing I have aura to help me live through this. Is this going to work? Ow. Taint poison. Oh no. This might have gone wrong. You have gained temporary warp. Ow. It's almost still going. Do I need to go get another milk bucket? As this failed, because I didn't have an extra milk bucket and it got deleted instead of being absorbed like I thought it was. Oh no. Oh, this has gone wrong. That was not the good deletion of the milk. Stop it. Can I stop the ritual? Okay. That went bad. I am apparently going to have to get extra milk buckets and stuff on standby before trying that again. So, ow. So, ain't poison, flux flu. Okay, so... Why did I just suddenly get flung backwards there? Did I wall jump off the thing and end up going backwards? I don't know. So, that's our first time seeing uh, Thomcraft go poorly. So... I'm, I'm going to have to regather those materials. Ordo was a tough thing to find, but apparently I know how to get it pretty well. And I don't know if I still have enough Victus and Herba, but that's pretty simple. I have like a millions of saplings and millions of wheat anyways, so I can just gather that again. Ordo is just going to be more chiseled bricks. I'm probably going to need to make more Alumentum, but that's pretty simple as well. I just need to toss some stuff in the Crucible. So, uh... We'll retry making that uh, anti-poison bobble next time. But for right now, I think that's probably a pretty good place to end things off. So I want to thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed as much as I have. And I hope to see you next time. So without further ado, take care, everybody.